with an oil leak this year caused by intake manifold bolts that weren't torqued down properly by whomever decided a Chinese head would be a good option for this car, it was time to install a new head. Here's the head that's going to go on the Lancer when we get it back up and running. We've got a Mopar purple camshaft here. It's been in this head for a little while, obviously got a very light amount of, that's almost more of a grease than anything on there, but nonetheless we're going to get that out and uh, we will be removing the uh, fitting here that's all chewed up and what have you. Of course this is the Great Lakes club car head from years ago. The chambers are untouched and the valves are stock. So untouched there. However, when you get around to this side, it's pretty easy to see that the intake has been gasket matched. The exhaust, however, has not. Um, it does look like there's been maybe a little bit of cleanup on the exhaust side, but not much, to be honest with you. So we're just going to run it as is. Got a ported exhaust manifold and uh, a pretty well untouched, except for maybe the uh, throttle body gasket somebody opened it up a little bit for uh for a two-piece intake so we'll get that going and see where we end up this wasn't the first fitting i've had to cut off of a cylinder head because it is fused to that three-quarter npt outlet that feeds the heater core nonetheless a quick bit of work with the angle grinder and we're all set here's what we're left with after cutting off that nipple there if I didn't know better, I'd say that that was a little piece pressed into the middle there, but that's clearly not the case, I don't think. We'll find out when we pull it out, though. All right. I'm going to take the old Metabo grinder here, grind out the inside of this thing, and probably try and crack it so that I can uh, tear it up with some vice grips or something, get it out of there. I've had to do this on a few of these uh, before, and... It's worth it, but it is a pain. Be extra careful if you ever try this. One slip with the grinder, or God forbid, the cold chisel, and you're gonna be due up for a trip to the machine shop. All right, now if you go slow and use that cold chisel, you can get it to where this thing will come loose. So do that, and from there, it's just gonna be a little getting her started. But uh, you can see I barely, barely, barely touch that to where you could just start to see the slightest hint of the fact that there were going to be some threads in there and it broke loose. So highly recommended. This old style fitting, I actually have a different one on the bench. This one right here, this is the later style uh, fitting that came in them. Uh, these reliably come out in my experience. The one that was in there, which if you're familiar with it, the one with that very, very thin flange to put a wrench on. This is how pretty much all of them end in my experience, but we're going to be going to some AN lines on this instead, so bring it on. Just got to get this head cleaned up really well after all this. All right, and I doubt that it'll come up on camera here, but you can see pretty clearly that there is no deformation of the threads, at least where I wasn't using the chisel or what have you, or the pipe wrench. I mean, it looks like, looks terrible like that, right? But if you look in there, you can maybe on camera, I'm not sure how well it'll show up, but you can kind of sort of see where I just started to cut through the, uh, the valley of the threads there. Okay. So when you see that, you know, you're really close and that's when you can pinch it off and cause it to, uh, become kind of oblong there, drive it into the center of the, of the bore. And, uh, it'll come out pretty easily. There's no damage to the threads in the head whatsoever. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised how good it looks. So uh, we'll be able to get this thing all cleaned up. Nothing worse than a few scoring marks here that the pipe wrench uh, laid down, it looks like. But those were pretty minor. So we'll get this head cleaned up. And uh, we're going to be in business here pretty shortly. It's a good looking head. Great Lakes Club Car head going to be back in action in 2020. So anybody that... Uh, was affiliated with that back back when, man. Good job, and it's going to be back on the road. Good times.
behold the cheap two-piece intake that's got way too many ports for vacuum lines installed in it. What was I thinking? All right, with the head cleaned up and valve train kind of relubricated there, I'm going to install the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold. Um, frankly, it's going to be the same ones that were on it. I just took everything off to get it all cleaned up. A lot of this stuff is pretty old school. Some of it is stuff that was kind of salvaged, if you will, because it was um, kind of partially ported or whatever, and somebody had it for sale, so I bought it for cheap. Since this whole project started because somebody didn't torque down the intake manifold bolts properly or use sealant on the ones that go into the head bolt passages, I went ahead and made sure that there was ample sealant on all the bolts and that they were torqued down properly. You hear a lot of talk about core shift on the number one cylinder on these two-piece intakes. Look at that. I think this might be, I mean, maybe it's the first time I've noticed or maybe it's just the worst I've seen. I actually, for a moment, thought that was a crack. I mean, I think when you get over here, you get to see it the best. I mean, that is insane core shift. But here we are. <laughs> here you can see how it's not really that gasket matched or anything on the exhaust, not really touched very much. Clearly going for an increase in intake flow, but that's gotta make for a heck of a bottleneck on the exhaust side, so. Either way, I bet it worked back when, and I bet it could work today. Spend the dollar and use the highest temp nickel anti-seize that you can find. This stuff has been great. The Loctite brand has always treated me well. All right, there's our intake and exhaust manifold reinstalled on this head. Everything cleaned up, new gasket, ready to go. Um, overall, I went down in the basement and thought, you know, I could do some work to a couple of these intake manifolds or you know, steal one I've got from a different project, but at the end of the day, I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and run it as is here. We've uh, had a lot of good times and put a lot of hard effort into these things originally. So while we've come a long way, I think this is going to be a great combination for the Lancer. It should make plenty of power and be a lot of fun to cruise around in, most importantly. Have that AC rolling and really, honestly, have quite the luxurious ride that could outperform the BMW 5 Series back in the day. All right, we've got pretty well everything off of the head that needs to come off, except for the oil feed line, I think. That's a real pain because if you look down here, you can see that uh, you gotta pull out that oil pressure sensor in order to get the oil feed line off. Kind of a downer. Uh, I've started doing these things differently now, so uh, this will be one of the last cars I do like that. Uh, nonetheless, throttle body's off. The hoses are disconnected from the turbo. Uh, I got the valve cover ready to come off, timing belt loosened, and off of the top pulley. One interesting thing to note here, if you've ever noticed uh, how these brackets are slotted like this, uh, that's because this bracket was made at a time when you could have still gotten uh, a tall deck motor. So the tall deck would have used the very top portion of that slot, and that was Mopar's way of being able to service both. Uh, that being said, I'm going to get this oil feed line off of there. Uh, it's gonna be 9 16 and from there all I have to do is disconnect the downpipe and the coolant feed to the turbo which is an A in line like I normally do so that won't take any time at all and then the head will come off. Uh, just real quickly too don't forget that uh, ground at the back of the head there that's a 3 8 uh, kind of body screw and then uh, that's about it really for the tricky ones I mean there's the coolant uh, sensor, you know, coolant temp for the gauge, but outside of that, just not a ton of stuff to get this uh, head off. Uh, everything on the bottom side of this bracket is actually in the block, so no worries there. You'll have to lift up above the head, but uh, for the most part, no big deal. And I guess since I haven't drained the coolant yet, I'm going to start the drain with the, uh, the coolant uh, feed. Obviously, the radiator hose is going to have to come off, but... Uh, yeah, good times. Now there are actually a couple things up here that I'm going to need to remove. I'm going to need to remove that coolant line going to the turbo over there on the left, and then that's the uh, oil return to the turbo. That'll need to come off. And then lastly, up there is the uh, swing valve bolts. So hopefully 
we can get this all squared away with the least amount of trouble possible. But I don't know. Whole deal is kind of crazy. So we'll we'll get that figured out. All right. Uh, just doing a basic analysis of the failure mode of this thing here. Not sure how uh, evident it looks on the screen here, but I can assure you the manifold was pretty well soaked with oil, especially here in cylinders three and four, where um, I noticed the oil actually kind of burning off from it. And if you look in there, I'll flip this around here. If you look in there, you can see where the oil was actually wicking into the carbon deposits in there um, through the gasket. So we'll pull off uh, the gasket and look at some. All right, as you can kind of see back there, we got a lot of oil buildup and deposits. And uh, it might not have actually been weeping as I thought from these bolt holes here uh, because if you look in there, let me see if I can get light back there to show it off or if that's just gonna... Well, I'm not sure how well, if at all, you can see it, but I assure you, there we go. The valve stem seal was pushed up on that cylinder. And that's after I replaced these. This is a Chinese cylinder head, and one of the things that I've read about them is that it is extremely difficult to get it to keep the valve stem seals on. And that one le looks like, not only, yeah, it looks like it's been leaking for a while, but besides that, there was definitely some oil coming out of some of the uh, bolt hole passages, if you will, for the... Uh, intake manifold and uh, I don't think that was helping anything at all furthermore give me a little bit of a breakdown on this um, I'll tell you straight away there's a lot of core shift in this I'd say s at least a sixteenth of an inch uh, the, the gasket is hanging over on uh, pretty well yeah actually pretty flush on the exhaust side but again that's kind of an issue there because you know stock they um, are so much closer but at least a 16th here probably closer to an eighth on cylinder number four so um well heck you can just look at the way the spacing between the bolt holes and the uh the ports it's significantly closer on this side than it is on this side um, really quite ridiculous and then while it's difficult to see if you try to look down into the cylinder itself those ports those ports get minute I mean come on how, how are you gonna make any power with that um, I don't know I've never seen one of these cut up I don't think there's really any reason to unless you're looking for really not even factory performance I uh, I cannot rec again to recommend against these cylinder heads enough. I just don't know what would... You'd have to be hard up to make this something that you'd want to go with, in my opinion. I mean, even let's... Let's just look at the way... So here's the, the cam caps. Okay, yeah, they're lined up fairly well on the back, but even let's come around here and look at the front. I mean, just look at the way that it doesn't really line up right there very well. I'll be honest, I don't even know that I want to keep this thing around as a spare. I, I guess I will because I don't have the heart to throw it away. But man, these things are junk. These are absolute junk. If you go from a Chinese, I'm telling you right now, if you go from a Chinese head to a good stock Mopar head, Right there, you're going to pick up significant flow. You're going to make way more power. I'll tell you that straight away. That's how bad these are. You can make way more power on a stock head than you can one of these Chinese heads. That's horrific. Okay, it's hard enough to get the fuel rail and everything in when you've got a two-piece intake, let alone when you've got this, um, I, I don't know if I'd call it a stock style because these plus 40s are pretty well the same style anyway. But um, nonetheless, you can see how much shorter 
the plus 20s are. And that might not seem like a lot, but that quarter or so inch right there is going to be all the difference between easily getting this um, fuel rail to seat down in the intake manifold and not. I found that literally just that little nib there was really slowing me down earlier. So we'll see if we can sneak it in there with the shorter injectors. Those are plus 20s anyway. So who knows, maybe crank the car up to 15 PSI or so, which should be a pretty good time. And uh, we'll go from there. So I thought I'd show you guys that. Okay, there is my modified T1 injector harness. Not gonna lie, I don't, I don't really like reusing these, but I just don't have the Bosch EV1 connectors lying around to, uh, to make my own harness right now. No big deal though, uh, it'll work for sure. So uh, very noticeable how much shorter these things are with the uh, plus 20s in there and that's a quick chip away, so no big deal there. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing in the intake manifold, good times. Here the car is nearly ready for the first start. As you can see, stuck with the turbo valve cover, two piece intake, modified with the vacuum lines. But overall, a relatively stock look. Down here you can see how I'm using the stock bracket and stock coolant return line with a modified oil feed line. That's a PTFE line. Now down here, I'm going to unplug the Hall Effect pickup and that will prevent the car from starting. Uh, so I'll have that going for me. Uh, stuck with the stock throttle body. Stock throttle body for now. Uh, frankly, I just want to get back on the road. Didn't want to have to worry about uh, really anything. Just wanted to be able to bolt it back together and go. So that's what we've done. And hopefully this thing does well. A shifter medallion has got to be the crowning touch to this head swap after a turbo rebuild because everything's good to go now, right? Well, not quite. Stick around for more repairs on the Dirty Lancer.